Item 7, uh, with the uh, naming, uh, I, I think we have Dr. Smith a, a presentation from uh, two of the committee members. Yes, and Dr. Statham has worked with uh, our staff as they have worked with the committee, and so I will ask Dr. Statham to introduce our guest today. Gladly. Um, we are excited to have Rachel Du Bois who, uh, with us, who is the principal of um, RMES number five, soon to have its own name, mm -hmm. and Dr. Eric Wilson, director for the school, who's been working very closely uh, with Rachel in this process. So I'll turn it over to them. Okay, great. Okay, good morning, Mr. Durso, Ms. Good Evans, morning. board members, Dr. Smith, good morning to you all. And um, I'm not quite a doctor yet, but I'll, I'll take that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Um, so one of the main tasks that Rachel needed to do was um, to convene a naming uh, committee for the school. And uh, this is in accordance with regulation FFARA. And so uh, that work began pretty much after she came on board February the 1st. And the naming committee consisted of a diverse group of 13 members, and that included Rachel and uh, one of her staff members as well. And we wanted it to be reflective of the demographics of the school. Um, on February the 26th, um, our board approved a resolution requesting that four names be considered for RMES number five, and those names are were Mary McLeod Bethune Elementary School, Emily Catherine Edmondson Elementary School, Josiah Henson Elementary School, and Bayard Rustin Elementary School. Thank you to the board for the opportunity to share about the school naming process for Richard Montgomery <coughs> Elementary School number five, soon to be named today. I am an advocate for all of our children and families and dedicated to making sure our community represents inclusiveness and acceptance. I will champion efforts to bring our community together through awareness and a culture of respect. I look forward to embracing the school name our board chooses for us and working with our community to build an amazing school in MCPS. Thank you very much. Ms. Ortman Faust. Yes, I really appreciated all of the testimony and the letters that we've gotten. Um, I love that the whole school naming process because uh, we are often looking at names that are very inspirational to the public and we learn a lot about equity warriors that people don't know anything about and that, that was very true in this circumstance as well and as Dr. Smith says we're a community of learners so uh, to get a community deeply engaged and even if there's conflict that they do deeper research and learn more about more people who made a difference that can only be a good thing so I really appreciate that. Um, I do think that what can be more inspiring to elementary school students right now than a school named after someone who had everything stacked against them and still made a difference and still persevered. A lot of people feel that we are in a dark time in our country right now where hate and prejudice and discrimination are on the rise. And as Mr. Post said, sending a message that we're on the right path um, with this march that I believe that was you who, who described that. I think that sending that message is really important, especially to our elementary school students. Um, I think it was Karen Chenoweth who said about demonstration, the importance of demonstrating um, how to make a difference. And I know in my own life, uh, my parents, uh, best friends were African American during that same time period that we've been talking about all, all morning, and they integrated a bowling alley. And my, I'm sorry, I'm crying because my parents have both passed away. But I heard that story all the, way all the way through growing up about how important that was to them, and that was a model for me. And I think whenever we can uh, model that for our kids, people that stand up, even when the circumstances are partic particularly difficult, is really important. And the message of this art contest we had was, united we learn. And I think that speaks to where we are, no matter what your background, no matter who you love, um, you are a part of our family, our collective family in MCPS, and I love that about this name, so thank you. Um, I just want to say, you know, this is a very tough one for me because I tend to be, believe that we really should um, 
try to adhere, you know, we have these processes in place, and I know people put a lot of time and energy and consideration into participating in this. Um, so it's hard for me to not support the community's <coughs> first choice. That said, in listening to you, every word that you read about what you are going to make this school be about and what you as a principal and as a community believe in, I do truly feel that Byron Rustin's um, contribution and his actions about inclusiveness, awareness, um, you know, all of the different values that you mentioned, um, he represents those. And, um, and so I just, I am so grateful to the time that the community put in. It's hard for me to um, feel like I have to kind of make a, a different choice, but I truly believe in my heart that um, as people get to know and understand the work that he did, um, and that it's more about his civil activism and his ability to stand up when, as Ms. Wortman Vell said, everything was pretty well stacked against him. Um, I, I think that that is an important lesson for our, our students to, to learn and understand, and you can never start too early, so. So my question is really just about our process. Um, did we, the last time, vote on all the names, or uh, because we put one name forward, uh, do we, if we don't support that name, do we vote against it? Or Because it's not really voting against anyone right. uh, that I see it as. Um, it really is in terms of just <laughs> yeah, my worry. thoughts about it, and I feel very strongly yeah. about uh, listening to the community mm -hmm. and what the community uh, requests. Um, I put forward uh, Mary McLeod Bethune, who uh, I thought embodied uh, a lot of what you talked about uh, as well. Um, in fact, I think all of the names, yes, other than, you. you know, Dogwood Elementary School, um, you know, uh, embodied what you want to do there. Uh, and so um, I, I just, you know, I don't want, um, you know, certainly uh, folks in the LGBTQ community to think that, you know, if we vote and we vote against that, that, you right. know, we're opposed to, you know, them or, you right. know, uh, this name. Uh, but uh, I do feel very strongly, and one of the reasons I ran for the Board of Education was that I felt that we should get input uh, from the community. And right. in a situation like this where the community has said uh, what it would like, um, I'm prepared to vote for uh, what the community wants. I was just going to add that um, as a board, we put forward a couple of names and Mayor Rustin, Rustin was one of the names that I voted for. Right. And so for me, it's just sticking to, mm -hmm. we have a variety of choices to make, um, that there were people that were on the committee that voted for the name as well. But it was more so about, when you think about what's going on in the world nationally, that we have someone that we can uplift that did a lot for the civil rights movement. Now, oftentimes, can we have the people in the classroom in front of our children that can provide that, that cultural um, proficiency, um, that cultural relevance to our students? And we can do that oftentimes in a name or um, with books that we have them to read. So for me, it's just thinking um, with values and not necessarily being educated by the people that were coming to speak before us. It's something that I was aware of prior to getting um, the testimony, so they, they were very moving, but for me it's just sticking with my values. So we, we as a board, I wouldn't say as a board, we brought forward quite a few numbers to the committee, names. No, I would just say, I would agree with you, uh, uh, Ms. O'Neill, that uh, naming schools for individuals uh, who can inspire students is uh, really important. Um, and uh, as I said, I think that all of these names uh, are inspiring. Uh, and uh, for me, the issue is uh, what the community asked for. I don't think it takes any less courage, uh, you know, to support uh, what the community asked for uh, as well. And uh, so um, uh, I, I feel very strongly about that, listening to uh, what they ask us to do. And so that's what I would and so the process began with each member first putting a name up on the list to take a look at. And the first energy vote in that first round of energy voting, Lillian Brown received four votes for a first place, for first the, a member's first choice. 
Dogwood received three votes for the member's first choice. Emily Catherine Edmondson received one vote as a first choice, and Bayard Rustin received one vote for a first choice. In that same first round of energy voting with the consensus, Lillian Brown received five votes as someone's second choice, three votes for Kath Emily Catherine Edmondson as her as a second choice, and one vote for Bayard Rustin for a second choice. After that, after looking at the names, the list was condensed a little more, and we did a final vote without Mary McLeod Bethune or Josiah Henson because there were no votes for those individuals. And so everyone had that one last sticky dot, that dot, dot voting from facilitative leadership and held on to that last dot. And so in the last round, Dogwood received four votes for the final first place dot. Emily Catherine Edmondson received four dots and Bayard Rustin received one dot. Lillian Brown was not put on that final list, I do want to mention, because it was clear with the nine choices that she was clearly the community's preference, of choice, preference on name, and that is why we didn't include her in that final round. We were really looking to follow the policy and moving forward to names for you to consider. You know, I have several friends who um, were in the closet for a long time and, and struggled with it, and the descriptions of the loneliness and the isolation that they have told me, the pain that comes with that because they felt like they couldn't come out or that they'd be an embarrassment to their family or shame to their family. Um, it, it really has Im impacted me in my thinking on this because it, whether it's late elementary school or early middle school, this is when students are, are looking around and wondering if the way they're feeling is normal. And to put someone like Byron Rustin on a pedestal to show that we honor these people, I, I think that significance cannot be understated. Um, and also, Rustin was not just uh, a, a, a gay man. He was an extraordinary gay man with a, a ton of other accomplishments, a leader in the civil rights movement. Um, and I, I, I will be casting a strong vote for Rustin Elementary School because um, I, I believe it's, it's the right thing to do and it's um, the, the right thing to do to, for our um, LGBTQ students. We decided on the survey as a way of committee members to get some feedback, but then encouraged various ways to get some input. So some members just went to the schools in the morning, a couple members went in the cafeteria to ask the children, and so we did encourage many other ways, not wanting a survey to be one data point in terms of us as a committee making a recommendation. And so we said it was okay for us to maybe do some different things in terms of gathering feedback, but it was represented amongst the three schools. On the survey, we did have, I believe, over 700 responses. The only thing we took into consideration with that survey is that um, members of Montgomery County were weighing in on, a, on that survey, but not necessarily from in our school community that we were feeding into. So we were able to just see a wide variety, but that was important that other people weighed in as well to just kind of see where, where the energy was in terms of that naming process. The survey itself really wasn't a survey designed to pick your favorite, but really again about how strongly do you feel about the recommended names embodying the community values and beliefs. You had mentioned the survey, but I don't know if you mentioned the results of the survey. So the survey was intended really as a tool for the committee members. So during the survey, as everyone weighed in, the the um, idea behind it was for committee members to get information on what the community was saying about the names and how they felt. It was not about tallying the results. So when Dr. Swimson and Ms. Naring began meeting number two, we talked about what in information did you gather from that survey? What are you hearing about the community's preference on names? One thing that I would say in terms of the naming process and about community feedback, the committee members did an excellent job of communicating the expectations of the board around the policy and the naming process. 
they constantly communicated in their emails to to their parent communities and their stakeholder groups that the expectation was the feedback was coming through the naming committee and that as a naming committee we would be recommending our prioritized list of names. I'm sorry, I'm just wondering, what was the information then that came back from, you said came, information came back from the survey. What was the information that came so back? So over 700 people took the survey. Mm -hmm. We didn't tally the survey in terms of who was the winner and who was the bottom, the bottom, mm -hmm. um, you know, voted name. It was about rating on a scale of five. You read a biography about each one of the four mm -hmm. names. Each committee member worked in a team to create the biography, shared the biographies, and as a person taking the survey, you read the survey mm -hmm. and you had a scale of one to five saying, how strongly does this person embody? Mm -hmm. And so everyone on the list of your four recommended names had votes for um, why they thought that name would be a good name or why they didn't like a name. There was an opportunity for each survey, each person who took the survey to leave comments, and there was an opportunity for members to, to suggest a different name. So when the committee members read all of the survey data, they said, hey, my community, it looks like when I looked at my community's results, because you could choose whether you were up from Bell, from Ritchie Park, or College Gardens, they said, it looks like my community was really advocating for Dogwood, or my, or that wasn't Dogwood, it was one of the four names. My community was really rooting for Mary McLeod Bethune, or Josiah Hudson, or Emily Catherine Edmondson, and they shared the reasons why, but they also had, again, that was one data point, so they also had all of the face-to-face -face input. So when Dr. Swimson and Ms. Nering started facilitating, each member then was able to put forward one name that was the resounding popular name that they were hearing from their community and then had time to advocate for that name. And then each member advocated for and against. Okay. okay. Uh, Just one, sure. one last comment. And um, I did note uh, in the... Um, uh, notes that we received that uh, you all selected Lillian Brown because she had ties to the community there in Rockville, is that correct? And that, uh, in fact, she was a teacher um, and she taught in Montgomery, well, she taught in school here in Maryland, um, you know, when we had so-called colored schools uh, as well and, um, you know, went on and retired, I think, in 1973, uh, somewhere there. Uh, so, you know, I can see that, you know, my colleagues, you know, favor uh, Bayard Rustin, and, you know, so I won't, you know, uh, vote or, you know, to oppose that, because I really don't oppose it, but I really do feel very strongly about listening to the community I agree and doing uh, what the community asked us to do. When we got so many um, uh, comments at the table uh, about um, the new Silver Creek, we had a lot of folks come and talk to us about uh, Harriet Tubman, and uh, we didn't, uh, you know, change from what the community wanted then. So. But anyway, I'll just yeah. abstain. We have a motion and a second on the floor for naming Richard Montgomery Elementary School after Bayard Rustin. All in favor? Ms. Hartman Faust, Dr. Daka, Ms. O'Neill, Ms. Evans, Ms. Mondrowski, Mr. Post. And I don't want to say opposed, but those not voting for Mr. Rustin. Mr. Durso and Mr. Dixon. That passes. <laughs> Strike that from the record. Uh, but uh, so we go forward uh, with the new, uh, uh, with the name of the new school. So, so, so you're no longer nameless for your school and uh, appreciate uh, not only our presenters, but all of the thoughtful consideration that the, that the board uh, has made. These are not always easy decisions, but we uh, stand in solidarity behind the decision that was made. Thank you both. Thank you. Can I say something quickly, Mr. Dursa? Um, sure. I, I just want to thank Mr. Uh, Eckstein for his advocacy about this, not only about this particularly school name, but uh, for informing us about Rustin. I was unfamiliar with him, and I am disappointed in myself for not knowing about him sooner. Point well taken.